story still haunts me to this day. This takes place around 10 years ago when I was like eight or nine. I lived in a pretty shitty neighborhood in a really rundown city. It wasn't good, but it wasn't bad at the same time. Just a few bad apples in the tree. Anyways, enough background on the neighborhood. Now onto the main story. My friends and I loved to play outside. It was the only thing we could do. No one in the neighborhood could afford any sort of electronics or any sort of fun machine to play with. We loved to just run through people's yards and cut through houses if they just so happened to leave their door open. Now looking back on it, it is probably the dumbest thing kids our age could have been doing in a neighborhood like that. This story has nothing to do with running in people's houses. Just wanted to let you know how dumb of kids we were. Well, on one fateful day, we were playing hide and seek with four of us hiders and one of us a seeker. We thought it would have been a funny idea to go to the other side of the neighborhood so that the seeker could never find us and we would win. And we like to call that part of the neighborhood the rich part because they had two story houses over there and a forest with a creek in it. We were just doing our usual thing, cutting through people's yards and jumping fences when we heard the loudest scream maybe four or five houses down. After hopping off the fence that we had just jumped, we all stopped and looked around wondering where it came from. I noticed that one of our hiders weren't with us anymore. Three of us left. Where's Kyle? I exclaimed. We heard the scream again. I pointed towards where the sound came from and we all jumped back over the fence we just jumped from and ran towards the scream. When we thought we got to the spot where the screaming was coming from, there was nothing there but an empty plot of land and the forest. We all started to get scared. Did Kyle get lost in the forest? Did he get taken back there? Then we heard the scream again. It was definitely Kyle. I decided to be the man of all the other eight-year-olds and go into the forest to make sure Kyle was okay. I knew at the moment that I was definitely the only one that could go down into the forest. Making my way in, I could feel all the heat in my body fading and some sort of dread starting to take over. As I walked further in, it started getting darker and harder to see. I was whisper yelling my friend's name. He responded in the most shaken up voice. Down here, be quiet. I finally got to him and asked him what happened. He told me this story of how he got tired of running and decided to take a break on the curb to catch his breath and that instead of being out in the open and risking the chance of being caught, he decided to go into the woods and hide. He said that after like five minutes after he sat down, he heard talking, nothing that he could make out. He looked around to see a man in a black hoodie hiding behind a tree on the other side of the creek staring at him, but the man took off before my friend could even get up to run away. And this is where he said he started screaming at the top of his lungs and hid somewhere else in the forest, which is where both of us are now hiding. And I kid you not, as soon as he told me this, we heard a twig snap. We both look up to see the man looking for us in some of the shrubbery on the forest floor. I couldn't make out any facial expressions or anything on his face for a matter of fact. I could see he was holding some sort of blade. I couldn't tell if it was a stick or a machete. All I knew is that we needed to run. So when he turned his back, we got up and started running. We didn't care how loud we were, we just knew that we needed to run. We got out of the forest and told all of our friends to run as fast as they could down the street. We kept running until we got to the other side of the block and we all turned around to see the street empty. Not a single car. And from a distance you could hear a roar, or like a very loud engine. Shortly after that initial roar, a silver Mustang with the darkest windows comes peeling around the corner faster than I've ever seen a car go, headed straight towards us. I've never had my body tighten up like it had at that very moment when I knew it was the same guy from the forest. I told all my friends to split up and run into people's yards to hide. So as we were all hiding and running through alleyways and jumping fences, you can still hear his engine. It was like he was targeting only me. I can't even tell you how far I ran. I got to the point where I didn't even think I was in my neighborhood but still I hear his engine coming up on me. So I ran more, I was exhausted. The sun finally started to set and I could hear his engine fade. Almost like he had forgotten about me or just had given up. I start making my way back home scared shitless, checking my back every so often to make sure I wasn't being followed. Once I made it home, I went right to bed to cry myself to sleep. And for months after that, that silver Mustang would follow us stalking every corner that we played on. We would see it at our school and at the grocery store. 
Hell, it could have been a coincidence that our little minds are now perceiving things around us, but either way, I think he was stalking us. Nothing actually came of him following us. He never did what he did that first day, but it was still so scary seeing that car everywhere we went. I didn't know how to tell my mom. So I didn't, and I still haven't. This story is for the people that are listening, and my four other friends. And funny enough, the seeker friend didn't know what happened until the day after when we were at school and we told him. He still doesn't believe us. So to the man that decided to chase a group of eight and nine-year-olds in his silver Mustang, let's never meet again. I've always been good friends with one of my cousins, Cole, who's the same age I am. And the two of us were not quite inseparable, but we always did get along very well together. And we're often found together, both in school, as we'd always wound up in the same class together throughout elementary school and outside of it. When we were 12 and in the sixth grade, I was hanging out with Cole on a Friday afternoon around the later part of May. And uh, we were psyched at the start of the weekend. We'd wound up at his house since he didn't live too far from me. And at one point my mom called to say that our grandpa was in the hospital. While the issue with our grandpa wasn't expected to be life-threatening, he was being kept at the hospital for observation. Both my parents and Coles were planning on staying with him and grandma at the hospital, since my mom and her sister were the two of their siblings who lived close by. I was told that I was given the okay to stay at Cole's house for the night, with Cole's 15-year-old brother Hunter being in charge while our parents were out. This was fine by us. I got along well enough with Hunter, and he was never the bossy older brother or cousin that some of my other friends said they had to put up with. We ordered out for pizza and enjoyed goofing off as boys of that age tend to do. At around nine or so, there was a knock at the front door and Cole went to answer it. I was a bit curious as to who it could be at that time of the night and so I watched from a way back. At the door were two older guys. They said that they were with the city and that they were investigating reports about the water pressure supposedly being bad in the neighborhood. They asked Cole if his parents were home and Cole said they were unavailable at that moment. We were told to say that to strangers if our parents weren't home. Because of that, the guys started asking a bunch of questions about how the water pressure was in the house and if they could come inside to check. Hunter came over at that point and politely told the guys that the water pressure was fine and perhaps they should move on to check on other homes in the neighborhood. The guys seemed reluctant to leave but turned and walked away after Hunter started closing the door. After the door was shut, we looked at each other and shrugged but didn't think too much of it after that and went back to goofing off. Eventually, we decided to go to bed. Cole and Hunter shared a bedroom and we all agreed that I'd sleep in there with them rather than me hitting the sack on the couch or something like that. So now we could talk while we fell asleep and Hunter grabbed a sleeping bag out of their camping supplies for me. When we got into their bedroom, they stripped down to their briefs and I remembered Cole had mentioned to me a while back that they had started sleeping in just their underwear. Since I hadn't originally planned on staying the night, I hadn't brought anything with me from home as far as overnight stuff. But since I wasn't in the mood to sleep in my clothes, I stripped down to my briefs as well. Though I felt a bit embarrassed. Even though we were all guys there, and I knew they wouldn't say anything or be judgmental. They climbed into their beds and I quickly crawled into the sleeping bag, and after talking for a while about random stuff, we eventually fell asleep. Early in the next morning, I got up because I had to pee. And so I quietly got out of the sleeping bag and went and did my business in the bathroom. On the way back to the bedroom, I heard something in the family room, which was on the opposite end of the house from the bedrooms and particular bathroom I was using. I didn't pay too much attention to it at the time, thinking it must be either Cole or Hunter, until I got back into the bedroom and realized that both of them were still in there. Trying not to panic, I woke them and told them that I thought someone was in the house. They quietly followed me, and the moment we walked into the family room, we saw the two guys from the night before in there, and it was rather clear they were robbing the place. One of them started moving towards us as he pulled out a wicked-looking knife. The three of us promptly raced to the front door, somehow managed to get it unlocked and open, and we fled outside. As luck would have it, a police officer was driving by at that particular moment. We quickly flagged him down and told him about the two guys in the house. The cop called for backup, and within a couple of minutes, several other cops were there, and they proceeded to enter the house, and after some searching, they caught the two guys. 
The cops figured out that the two guys must have entered from a window in the laundry room that had a broken latch and had probably targeted that house because while it wasn't empty, they'd probably realized that there were no adults there and figured that if we discovered them, we could be more easily dealt with than adults. To add insult to injury, while we were waiting outside while the cops searched the house, both to get the two guys and make sure that there was no one else with them, some of the neighbors came out to see what the commotion was about. And this included some kids who went to the same school as Cole and me, including a few who were in our sixth grade class with us. It was during that time that the three of us realized that we'd never had the chance to get dressed. So just like in the stereotypical nightmare, we had to stand outside in full view of everyone in just our briefs for what seemed like forever before being allowed back inside. When we went back to school on Monday, Cole and I had to put up with more than a bit of snickering, stares, and ribbing for the next few weeks until school ended for the summer. 